Area DMG. Welcome back to Area DMG. I'm your host, Hope Wesley, the All Mile High Mouth, and today we're going to talk about, well, levels of books. You see, there are levels to books. And in a way, I've mentioned this before, like for example, how I felt like this would be a good book to start with if you want to learn more about um, narcissism and how to defend yourself against it. Followed by this one, which is like the, uh, the um, best one to do that. And then I'm going through a, currently this one called uh, Psychopath Free, which, oh gosh, this and this right here are kind of a master's work in this. At some point, I should probably have a, have a bachelor's degree in uh, this stuff. Oh my gosh. Which, of course, is why I'm going to this one after that, which, oh my goodness, yeah. Which is actually a bachelor's degree in uh, learning about psychopathy. Which is a cluster B type of personality, which we'll go into those things at some point. But right now, I'm going to talk a little bit about self-help books. Or assertiveness training books, in a way. Um, there's a difference between this and this. Essentially... This is a this is a more um, this is from the eighties. It's called Your Perfect Right. A great looking book, by the way. Back when they used to make these look good, and this is more of a modern update on that in a way. This one is not about narcissism so much as being more assertive. Interesting thing, but none of these are really a complete package. Over this book that I'm going to go ahead and review here, Jordan B. Peterson's. 12 Rules for Life, an Antidote to Chaos, which I honestly would not have checked this out had it not been for a couple people saying, hey, you should check out Jordan B. Peterson, he is pretty good. I would have checked out this book in an audiobook format and then in a, in a, um, in a physical format if it hadn't been for, well, uh, I blame, I blame uh, Felix Shelberg, or however you pronounce his last name for this, you know, PewDiePie, because he did that little thing. He's like, yeah, I like this one, etc. I'm like, I should check that out, see if it's any good. And also people are like, here's the hero of the alt right, blah blah blah, lobsters, blah blah blah. And I was like, huh. So if a really bad people are saying that this book is terrible, hmm. And if really people who I have some modicum of respect for say it's pretty good, I should check it out. Because even if I don't agree with the book, I should always check it out because that's what being a human being is. You know, if something, if, some, if you disagree with someone, find out why you disagree with them. It's okay to read other people's arguments. There's a big thing to be said about that. Anyways, this is good. I, I wholeheartedly recommend this book. Um, if I were giving this like a score, I would give it an 8 out of 10. For everyone. Even if you're, not, if you're new to self-help books, pick it up. If you're not new to self-help books, pick it up anyways. It's still pretty good. Um, basic idea is, and I think this is hilarious, because people are like, Oh, he's, he's a hero of the alt-right. Oh, he's using Pepe and OK signs. Oh, white supremacy. And I'm like, um, this is a liberal professor from Canada who wrote a book which uh, tends to talk a lot about, well, the alt-right essentially is more like a... Uh, yeah, the alt-right essentially has an atheism bend to it, for the most part. And uh, he's not an atheist. Like, Jordan B. Peterson is pretty great, actually. And um, there's something I'm going to mention about something in Canada. Canada has some interesting rules when it comes to, like, psychopaths and things like that, which is why I'm looking forward to reading this, because this guy here gets to actually interview people like that and stuff. There's interesting stuff because honest to goodness in Canada if you wanted to go interview like a a Manson or a Holmes type person you just ask and they let you whereas in America you have to jump through all those who all sorts of horrible hoops and background checks and even then you're not going to be able to like 
I think there's a, a value in talking to the worst of people. I think there's a value in reading what the Unabomber has to say, or what an Elliot Gold or a, uh, a James Holmes has written down. I think if people read those, a lot of people would realize that um, James Holmes was a social justice warrior, or whatever that means. A quote, social justice warrior, end quote. Because, yeah, goodness knows, that doesn't mean what it used to. Actually, I was re-watching uh, Eternal Sunshine for a Spotless Mind, and uh, Mark Ruffalo's character says, Oh, what we do here, where they erase uh, people's memories, essentially, and cause brain damage. He goes, oh, it's just social justice. We give people a new beginning by removing the bad things and pain in their life. And I'm like, oh, good Lord, that is so bad. And Mark Ruffalo said it, so uh, I have to trust the Hulk on that one. Anyways, let's get back to Jordan B. Peterson's The Twelve Rules for Life, an antidote for cha to chaos. The audiobook for this is read by the author. He's got this great voice that sounds like an elderly, old papa type person. Anyways, <laughs> here are his 12 rules. One, stand up straight with your shoulders back. That's the one that people who um, criticize this book is like, I was obsessed with lobsters. There's some mention of lobsters in the first rule. And it's important because he goes over it, and I'm not going to spoil what it is. Two, Treat yourself like someone you are responsible for helping. That is such a good rule. Like, such a good one. Rule three, make friends with people who want the best for you. This is actually more or less uh, how you avoid a lot of this and this. Actually, the only problem is you need to learn to identify these because they will spend time telling you that they want what's best for you, but they really don't. That's the idealization phase. Oh boy. Anyways, so you have to figure that out. But this actually has some stuff on that. Rule four: Compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not to not to not to who someone else is today. That's a really good one. Mm -hmm. Rule six: Set your house in perfect order before you criticize the world. Rule seven: Pursue what is meaningful, not what is expedient. Rule eight. Tell the truth, or at least don't lie. Which is, you know, lies of omission and such too, as well. Rule 9. Assume the, per uh, the person you are listening to might know something you don't. Rule 10. Be precise in your speech. I am not very precise in my speech, but yeah. Um, these actually, the name of the, uh, of the chapter, or the rule, is actually slightly different from the actual point of the, of the area with the rule. He uses a lot of great examples. I, I like this one. Rule number 11, do not bother children when they are skateboarding. And rule 12, pet a cat when you encounter one on the street. Which, honest to goodness, these are some pretty good rules for life. And they, this um, is written in a way that's not, it's not preachy. Although he does make a lot of references to religion and Christianity and the Bible and the Torah and all sorts of other things. And the reason for it is because, well, I guess the best way to reason the best way to look at it is to uh, I actually recommend that people purchase the physical version of this because it's got the illustrations. It's got a little bit more than the audiobook version does. The audiobook version is great if you're passively listening to it. The actual book, Jordan B. Peterson, he's a great, great guy. If you go watch some of his interviews, but not the one from Vice because they selectively edited it. Go watch his actual YouTube channel. But yeah, um, these particular ones, <laughs> oh man, that painting. <laughs> Anyways, now nah, a lot of these particular ones that he's got in here, they're they're not what they say, they they mean seem when you look at it. In fact, a lot of this is just uh well, it's about embracing a better self, checking your values, comparing your values to how they work for you and how they would work um and there's also a lot of it here in, essentially in these is uh uh, I guess the best way to describe this is that this is a it's it is kind of a self-help book but it's also kind of a everyone should probably read this book because let's be honest reading makes people better people 
Teaching someone to read makes that person a better person. Reading makes us better. But you have to be a little careful, because there is such a thing as garbage in, garbage out. And luckily, the 12 Rules for Life, an antidote for chaos, antidote to chaos, is about finding and identifying what's garbage and not putting it in, and not adhering to it. A lot of these are about, essentially, self-actualization, which is why I would say that, uh, in some ways, let's find this right quick, you've got your level a, level 1, your level 2, and then your level 3. But the funny thing about this is that you don't really need to skip get through level 1 or level 2 to get to level 3. Um, Jordan B. Peterson's stuff is pretty great. Oh, by the way, I found out that this dude right here has a YouTube channel, and it is totally worth it. He has like 250 subscribers or something, and no, he needs more subscribers. Both of these people, Jordan B. Peterson and Mark Manson, have YouTube channels. I recommend that you go out and seek those out because they're worth it. And I also recommend that you check out some of the other people on BookTube. Um, I'm just going to say it again. I'd like to see some of these channels that only have a couple thousand subscribers and stuff get more subscribers and more viewers because a lot of them have really great things to say. Actually, they all have great things to say. This guy has some great things to say, and he just tears apart people in a debate. Oh my goodness, because you can tell when someone didn't read their book, his book. But yeah, um, let me see if I can find... He's got some pretty good examples of stuff here, but he goes through... Let me see if I can find... Uh, yeah, you'll find a lot of this, where he'll sit there and he'll, uh, he'll go ahead and quote, like, Bible verses or other items... I think this is like the Wisdom of Solomon, if I remember correctly, or Song of Solomon. I'm trying to remember. What, what um, It says Wisdom of Solomon, so it's probably the Wisdom of Solomon with the Revised Standard Version. It's like, short and sorrowful is our life, and there is no remedy when a man comes to his end, and no one has been known to return from Hades. Because we were born by mere chance, and hereafter we shall be as though we have never been, because the breath of our nostrils is smoke, and reason is a spark kindled, by the beating of our hearts. When it is extinguished, the body will turn to ashes, and the spirit will dissolve like empty air. Our name will be forgotten in time, and no one will remember our works. Our life will pass away like the traces of a cloud, and be scattered like mist that is chased by the rays of the sun and overcome by its heat. For our allotted time is the passing of a shadow, and there is no return from our death because it is sealed up and no one turns back. Come, therefore, let us enjoy the good things that exist, and make the use of the creation to the full as in youth. Let us take our fill of costly wine and perfumes, and let no flower or spring pass by us. I'm not sure this is from the Bible. I have to check. Let us crown ourselves with rosebuds before they wither. Let none of us fail to share in our revelry. Everyone, let us leave. Everywhere, let us leave signs of enjoyment, because this is our portion, and this our lot. B. Let us oppress... Let us oppress the righteous poor man. Let us not spare the widow, nor regard the gray hairs of the aged. But let our might be our law of right, for what is weak proves itself to be useless. The pleasure of expediency may be fleeting, but it's pleasure nonetheless. This is part of, um, this is part of his Rule 7, which is pursue what is meaningful, not what is expedient. Because you need to find and decide and look through your values about what you care about, what you actually give a blank about, and go for it because it is literally your perfect right to enjoy it. That's not narcissism. That's self-respect, which is actually a line from here. <laughs> I, I love this stuff, actually. Uh, it, it, it's nice. I've gotten back into so much more reading. Doubt pat like, he talks about stuff like nihilism and how that's a problem. He goes into so many of these and his examples are fantastic. But like this one, yeah, pet a cat when you encounter one on the street. And he goes, dogs are okay too. I'm going to start this chapter by stating directly that I own a dog, an American Eskimo, one of the many variants of the basic Spitz type, et cetera, et cetera. Yep, yep. Anyways, he goes about that. And I'm not going to read the book to you, but ah, just, just know that this is a fantastic book. It is well worth your time to read. 
it is a quick read too. It's only uh, let's see, um, three hundred and seventy pages. You know, and then lots of different notes, lots of different notes and indexes, indices, and <laughs> it's pretty fantastic. It it's a uh, it is psychology, which God, I love psychology. Also, this is one where um, I've been looking around for a, I actually, um, I found some PDFs of it, but I have to sit down at some point and read the Gulag Archipelago because, yike. But no, people are talking about, oh, he's obsessed with lobsters, blah, 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 blah. No, it's because he references the secret life of lobsters, how fishermen and scientists are unraveling the mysteries of our favorite crustacean. That's because lobsters are very visibly a nervous system in a shell. They're literally a nervous system, tasty meat, and a shell. <laughs> you can open them up while they're still alive and mess around with their nervous system. You can see where stuff is going there, like serotonin and all this other stuff and dopamine and such. The chemical reactions of it. Which, by the way, that's a wonderful thing about psychology. I remember a long time ago, I used to be very critical of psychology because I was like, well, you have this, and it's all kind of touchy-feely, namby-pamby, etc., etc. And then I learned about conversion. And then I learned about the actual effects of it. And that, yes, the whole chemical imbalance thing, that's not, it's much more complex than that. It's not like, oh, you have a, not the right amount of serotonin, or not the right amount of dopamine. It's not just that. You actually have some control of that. It's actually important to keep track of what you eat, what you put into your body, because garbage in, garbage out. And then there are some, there's some things to, na there's nature and there's also nurture. For example, a lot of people, and we'll probably get into that when I get into this book, because I, I did read through a little bit of it and put it down because I was in the middle of another book. And a lot of what you'll probably find out, I'll probably find out on this one, Kind of, um, a lot of this just backs up a lot of theories I have, actually, about cluster B personalities. Um, the psychology of this helps, because this is a great book. I feel like if this is too much, not something you want to be seen reading, this is one you could read in church, and if somebody in your church is all like, You shouldn't be reading Jordan B. Peterson! He's the outright! Leave that church. It's no good for you. That's a bad church. <laughs> Let's be honest here. But this guy here, his book, I thought it was great. It wasn't a lot, it was a lot of stuff that I've, I kind of already knew from other books and other theories, but it's presented in a plain spoken and non condescending way. It's not tongue in cheek, it has some humor to it, and it takes into account one thing that I've loved about modern therapy is that. You can pick and choose what a, thera what a therapist specializes in. I know people are like, I'm afraid to do this. No, no, no. There are people who all they do is therapy that deals with recovery, like from, uh, from an abusive relationship or from a alcohol dependency or abusive parents or PTSD, complex PTSD. All those things. There are therapists who specifically specialize in that. And you can choose what type of therapist you ha you want. And you can be like, well, I want one who comes from a Christian background. I want one who comes from a Jewish background. I'd like a therapist who's an atheist. I'd like a therapist who believes in Islam. I'd like a therapist who believes in Hinduism or Sikhism. Although, I've, I've always thought that like a uh, I always thought it was something closed, and like a lot of it seemed anti-science. A lot of psychiatry seemed like that, because there are some bad sides to psycholo psychology and psychiatry, specifically the pharma pharmacology part of it. And a lot of that has to do with, well, the idea of a chemical imbalance being in it, that we don't have that much control over it. And one thing that Jordan B. Peterson kind of postulates in this is that you do actually have that. The funny thing about your mind, and the best part, the most brilliant part 
of the intelligent design of our brain is that we can change it, that we can take in information and change it. Because we are at our fundamental mo mode, we are, we are fundamentally ambulatory, always in motion. Even people who are stationary or standing still in this, they can be put into motion in some way. Now, there are parts where, yeah, there are people who are irretrievable, and that is unfortunate, and it's sad. But those people, luckily enough for them, a Cluster B personality is a victim that doesn't think of themselves as a victim. They think of themselves as better. And that's actually a thing that you, part of these are about going against that, that chaos of that. I guess is the best way to put it. Like, let's go back to these rules again. Like, this one. Treat yourself like someone who you are responsible for helping. In this one, in that one there, he talks about, about a little bit about um, how people will go and they'll take their pets to the vet. If you care about an animal, you're going to take it to the vet. You're going to take care of your animal. You feed them. You, you give them water. You groom them. You change all their stuff for them. You, you help them out. You take, people will spend thousands of dollars on an animal before they'll go to the doctor themselves. And the reason for that is because there's a difference between being responsible for something and then being responsible for yourself. And with that rule, to treat yourself like someone you are responsible for means don't treat yourself as your own individual so much as somebody that you are taking care of. Like, we all want, when we have to take care of like uh, a dog or a cat or a, an elderly parent or an elderly grandmother, grandfather, etc. We want to take care of them. We want to take care of our children. We want to take care of our, our significant others, our spouses, our, our friends. We want to take care of people. But sometimes we tend, if you're an actual human being, somebody with actual empathy, you want to take care of other people. But you should take care of yourself, and you should treat yourself like someone that you have to take care of. And he goes into that one, that's a really good chapter, about how, you know, we need to do better for ourselves. That's why I, I encourage people to go out there and read. I encourage people to go out there and, and get that information and that knowledge. And I feel that this is a great book for that. It's also, because it's a frequent seller, it's a bestseller now, it's constantly on sale at many smaller bookstores, many larger bookstores, and I actually do recommend people go out there, I'm going to say it again, go out and support your local bookstore. Do you have a local bookstore out there? Do you have a books, I mean, even if you've got a Books A Million, or a Second and Charles, or a Barnes and Noble, or you have smaller bookstores like there's a couple great ones in the, in the town where I grew up there's still a pretty good one and if I'd lived in this town I would have ordered it from there I would have ordered it from them but yeah around here we have like I said black and reed and tattered cover which I can't say enough good things about those stores because they're great and I can't say enough good things about your local library which probably has a copy of this or two which is probably gone because it's been a really popular book if you have a coworker you can borrow it from, do it because it's worth it. This is a worthwhile book. Now there's a bunch of people out there trying to smear Jordan Peterson. I mean, you'll have like companies that are based uh, that, that name themselves after sin, <clears throat> vice, or companies that name themselves after Armenian genocide and Holocaust and then deny it exists. <clears throat> you know who you guys are. And those are people out there trying to smear this guy because there's people who are like, oh, he's a hero of the alt-right. No, 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 no. He isn't. I mean, seriously. He's a liberal professor, psychologist, psychologist from Canada. Uh, that's the exact opposite of a Rush Limbaugh or a Glenn Beck or a uh, Mark Levin um, it's a little closer to a Goldwater, like a, and um, Goldwater is really good, <laughs> but it's a different. It's also different from like a Saul Alinsky, or a uh, uh, an Ariana Huffington, or um, a uh, Jim Hightower, or oh, 
or a Michael Moore, although to be honest, if you're getting life advice from Michael Moore, um, you're probably also one of those people who's like, I want to eat me some tasty Tide Pods. Don't. Don't take it life advice from Glenn Beck or Michael Moore. Thank you. This has been your PSA about that. Anyways, getting back to this book. I put it on this chess book, chessboard because I like the way this chessboard looks. I mean, God, look at the textures on that. It's much more interesting than like a black background with some texture to it. Mmm, texture. But yeah, I recommend this book. And I know that I've mentioned, oh, I do need to read The Lucifer Principle at some point. And then there's another one, it's like The Lucifer Experiment, which I have to read through. And then there's like, yeah, the Gulag Archipelago. There are so many books. Oh my gosh, there are so many books. And you should read this one. It's good. It's psychology, self-help. But if you've never read a self-help book in your life, how do you know you're not, you don't like them? A lot of people are like, I don't need to read a self-help book. I'm self-actualized. Are you? Are you really? Check your premise. Is your premise good? Or is your premise faulty? Because a lot of these are actually about checking your premise. They're about not contributing to chaos. They're about finding an order to your life. Finding and, and fixing the things in yourself that make you disorderly. Because actually one thing we've discovered is that rather psychologists and therapists and uh, people have discovered is that, you know, I think therefore I am, is true. Because what you think is what you become. What you dwell upon is what you become. And that's, in, that's expressed a lot in this. And actually, one thing about that is you'll find that in the Bible. You'll find that in the Quran. You'll find it in, you'll find it in the Torah. You'll find it in the Talmud. Or, wait, is this the same? No, they're not. Uh, you'll find it in the Kabbalah. What you think, therefore, you are. You'll find it in the Urantia book, for a crying out loud. But, oh yeah, I'll get into that one at some point. Oh my gosh. If you've ever wanted to see an amazing religion, look up, I think it's the book of Urantia. In fact, it's in my closet somewhere. In fact, I'm going to find it and show it, because it's amazing. Yeah, at some point... We're going to get into this. And this is amazing. Why is this amazing? <laughs> Think of a religion that showed up in Chicago in the early, like, the, yeah, in around 19, the early, like, the late 1950s. Explains everything and ties all religions into itself. And then they disappear, like, less than five years later, without a trace. Yeah. Also, everything is aliens, which, <gasps> you gotta love that. But yeah, um, religion, fun. <laughs> Anyways, let's get back to the 12 rules for life, an antidote for chaos. Now, part of this is also about being mindful. Mindfulness is kind of a, a big thing nowadays. There's, a, there's actually a book I need to check out at some point by this guy who's like, The Case Against Empathy, because a lot of psychology today a lot of mental health today is let's talk about empathy and how something makes you feel and how to handle those feelings. And I have to read that Case Against Empathy book. It looked interesting. I think I took a picture of it. I also took a picture of like the Lucifer effect. I think it's like Lucifer principle or Lucifer effect. That was the one about like the uh, um, why good people can be persuaded to do evil things. Pretty good stuff. But yeah, there's like this huge anti-empathy um, contingent in some sectors of psychology, which have, I think there, I saw a pretty good book on that, that's what it looked, it looked pretty good, I'll have to read it at some point. But uh, yeah, like for example, mindfulness and empathy are, are good. I think that there are good ways to, uh, a lot of it just boils down to, at the end of the day, manners. Um, a lot of uh, what I was taught growing up actually works. I, I have to thank my I have to thank my um I have to thank my parents. I have to thank my church. I have to thank the people around me for that. I have to thank the people who've 
lied to and abused me, I have to thank the people who were there for me. I have to thank people for that because at the end of the day, it's all about our own personal thing. Um, this is a good little guidebook or a good blueprint for that because a lot of people don't have a structure to their lives. We're just kind of wandering around and when you're wandering around detached, you feel all sorts of pain. Life is horrible pain. And that pain is caused by that chaos. And that's what Jordan B. Peterson is talking about here. Getting rid of that, that pain, that chaos, by putting together in places and rules. These are essentially 12 boundaries for a happy life. In a way, this is about setting boundaries. A counterintuitive approach to living a good life. No, no. It, it's about what, what you allow to hurt you. What you allow yourself to care about. What you allow to invade your boundaries. This is about enforcing those boundaries. And this is a good backbone for those boundaries. Unlike, we're not lobsters in that you can open us up and all you see is raw nerves and tasty, tasty meat in a hard shell. We don't have a hard shell. All of our tasty meat is on the outside. Our hard shells on the inside, surrounded by a bundle of nerves. I know that's not the most uh, <laughs> appropriate way to describe the human race, but we are just tasty flesh with hard bones inside. Good little, not bird bones, not the ones that cut the roof of whatever's eating us, but uh, yeah. This is pretty good. You should check it out. I liked it. Have you checked this book out? Let me know in the comments below if you've read this book. Or if you're interested in reading this book, visit your local library and see if they have this book. Why not check it out? Or go into your local uh, bookstore, pick up the book. I recommend people go through and like, what I do is I usually read like the first chapter of a book, after or the prologue to the book, and decide whether or not I want to want to read up on it or whatnot. Uh, it's um because the way, yeah, he's a clinical psychologist and a, a uh, professor of psychology. Yeah, I know. The first chat, first rule, they talk about lobsters and territory. That way, if you'll see people being all like, But aren't you seen as a father figure to the alt right? Or, Oh, lobsters! That means they didn't read past the first chapter. And people who. Okay, can you read a book and give an opinion on it from the first chapter? N no. Um, one thing I hate is when people are like, I don't know what to do. I can't play this game. I'm not very good at this game. We see this all the time with reviewers. I saw a review for a Xeno... Uh, not Xeno... It's Xeno Blaster. Wait, is that it? No, Zeo Drifter. Yeah, Zeo Drifter. Um, I'll have to play a little bit more of that. It's uh, from a Tui. And there was a person... I saw a review where the person's like, You can't regain your health. I'm like, No, you just use the little Metroid trick in it. You have unlimited the unlimited ability to regain health in this game. It's the way it's built. And then people will just... I don't know. I saw a lot of that when Cuphead was a big thing people were going for. No, Cuphead's not a terribly difficult game. It's about rote pattern memorization, like from Mega Man 1 and 2. But they're not impossible games. And they're not unfair in their difficulty. You know what you're getting into when you picked it up. And with this one, you know what you're getting into when you pick it up. If you if you don't, you should pick it up and read like the first chapter. If the first chapter, um, if you put it down after the first chapter and you're like, yeah, this is not my thing, fine. But most people should just read through it anyways, you know? I, I really feel like it's got a lot of good stuff to say about the situation that we found ourselves in in our chaotic world. And it's important for people to know that you can make sense of that chaos. It's okay. You you can you can be of the world. Sorry, no, you can be in the world, not of the world. And if you're a Christian, you should check out this book because uh, Jordan B. Peterson has a lot in common with you, and he's got a lot to say here that is very compatible with um, with religion because he is a religious person himself. Now, don't let that put you off from reading this book, mind you. You can read this book and enjoy it, even if you're a filthy atheist. No, I'm kidding. You're not filthy. Most of you shower, right? No, I'm kidding. You probably don't. Ah. Oh, no! 
Showering is like being baptized, and I want to avoid religion. Oh, no, and I'm going to get downvoted or thumbs down because somebody's like, I don't know, he called atheist filthy. Dude, I'm just kidding. It's cool. It's cool. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Most people I know who are atheists grow ironic beards. Yeah. <laughs> but no, um, Jordan B. Peterson's pretty good. I like this book. Thank you for sticking through the review. If you stuck through this review and listened to my rambling throughout it, you are the real MVP here. You are fantastic. You should give this video a thumbs up because I'm giving you a thumbs up on your life because you stuck through this video all the way through and you're amazing. And you know what? Share this with other people. Uh, if, if, if I recommend this book. And there's many, many different reasons why I recommend it. I went through most of those, I think, in this review. And, uh, hey, if you're on the fence about it, why not listen to somebody rant on for like 35 minutes plus about this book? Because why not? You should pick it up. It's pretty good. I liked it. I'm pretty sure you'll like it too. But if you don't believe me, pick it up in your local bookstore. Read that first chapter or so. It's written nice and plainly. It's written well. Um, it's con it's con concise. It's it's a full package book. You really can't skip around through it. Never skip around through books. Oh my gosh, don't. Just read them straight through what I do. Just read them straight through. Just do it. It's important. Because it's the journey of it. And with self-help books like this one, it's important for you to read through it. Because it's good. You'll like it. I liked it. It's pretty good. And if there's a... Yeah, let me know in the comments below if you've read it. Have you, did you get the audiobook? Um, at some point, you can get the audiobook on Audible. I don't have an Audible, Audible partnership or whatnot. Although, heck, I should sign up for that. Because, hey, Audible.com. They've got things and audiobooks and you can buy them. Eh. You know, we'll have to set something up so people can donate money to us so we don't have to go into sponsorships or whatnot. You know what I mean, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, pay the bills. Anyways. I've been ranting on for about almost 40 minutes with this right here, and that's fine because it's a good book and you should read it. It's not too difficult to get through. You'll read it in the, like I did in a matter of days, like maybe, or a matter of hours. It actually took me longer to get through the audio book than to get through the actual book because the audio book, you're listening to the author read it and the inflections and the way he, he wants you to think of these in his head. And then when you read through it in physical form, it's, yeah, why am I double dipping on that? Because I, I work at a desk, <laughs> and I like reading, so you just have to put up with it with me. Anyways, good book. I liked it. You should pick it up if you haven't already. Hit that subscribe button, that share button, all that stuff. And let me know in the comments below what you think of this book. What you think of Jordan D. P P T Peterson? Do you like him? He's pretty cool. I'd, I'd go see a speech of his or whatnot. That'd be cool. But yeah, let me know in the comments below. Hit that thumbs up, that share, subscribe, etc., etc. Ring that little bell so that you're notified, blah, 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 whenever we have a new video, etc. And until the next video comes out, you are now caught up.